Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi, and today we're doing the bladder anatomy. Thank you all for tuning in. This is my board from my crash course of GIT module and renal module. Uh, so, guys, if you really want that entire crash course, then you should definitely uh, give me a DM. The link to my Instagram is down below in the description. So, let's get started with the bladder. If you've been wondering what the heck is bladder, this is getting really confusing. You have been on the wrong videos. You are finally here in the right place where I'm going to teach you everything about the bladder that you need to know. So so what's important for the bladder is that we need to know the structure of the bladder, the gross features. Now, what does gross mean? That is a basic concept I want to clear for all of you because many people don't know this, but gross means things you can see from your naked eye. Like you don't need a microscope or a magnifying glass. You can see them. So gross feature is basically the gross anatomy is about talking about whatever we can see. And histology is a microscopic anatomy. It means when you do a microscope, what do you see? That is a subject of histology. I'm sure many of you didn't know that, but now you know, and that's what matters. So guys, first we're gonna talk about the um, basic features of the bladder, uh, gross anatomically. And then I'll go ahead and talk about the relations. Quite difficult, but I've made them very easy. So uh, stay tuned. Guys, firstly, the bladder's shape is a little complicated. It is like a pyramid, you can say, and it goes like this. Uh, I will also link, uh, I will also add a video over here uh, where I will be showing you the shape in a 3D form. So first, let me just uh, explain to you. This is what you're going to see anteriorly. This is like from one side we're viewing, like from the right side, let's suppose. So anteriorly, what you see is this, the apex. The apex uh, projecting from it is going to be this thing called the median umbilical ligament. Remember that for your relations. All right. And up above, there's going to be a superior surface. Obviously, it's going to be 3D like that. So superior surface. Then we have a base. Base is also the posterior surface of the bladder. Then we have tool infralateral surface on either side of the superior surface makes a lot of sense one is here one is going to be on the other side and finally the neck neck is where you're going to find this very important sphincter known as the sphincter vesicae or the internal urethral sphincter where the urethra begins and its internal part and it is like the involuntary sphincter that is controlled by parasympathetic uh, system autonomic system so this is the basic structure of bladder understood so here i've tried to replicate the shape of bladder so you can get a 3d estimate of what it looks like or it will be actually an idea of this is that you should understand that if you can see here is that this is the apex of the bladder you can see it is pointy and this entirely is the anterior border from running from the apex down and then we have part posteriorly this is the base of the bladder superiorly there's a superior surface of the bladder on either side of the superior surface you can see these two surfaces this one and this one these are the infralateral surfaces and uh, finally what we have is the neck where my fingers are curled around the bladder that's the neck here is where the control of the urinary passage is there. It's going to have the internal urethral sphincter, also known as sphincter vesicae. So just like my hand is controlling that if urine can leave or not, that if the neck is going to remain closed or not, just like that, the bladder also controls it via a sphincter over here. So these are the various parts of the bladder. Uh, now what we need to know, do is know a bit about what happens to the bladder when it is empty and when it is full. When it is empty, I want you guys to remember there's a pelvic cavity. Uh, basically, bladder is the organ of a pel pelvic cavity. I'm sure you all knew that. And then the abdominal cavity lies above the pelvic cavity where there's all the abdominal organs. So the pelvis is where the bladder is lying and it is lying in the anterior most part of the uh, pelvic cavity. But when this uh, bladder is full, its shape becomes ovoid rather than the one we just studied. It becomes larger, so it becomes oval shaped and it enters your abdominal cavity. This is very important to know because there's going to be clinical associated with this that uh, if you want to aspirate the bladder when it's full, it will be in the abdominal cavity. So we can aspirate from the abdominal cavity itself. Apart from that, a little more structure, a little more perspective of the bladder is that in males and females, let's just talk about the organs lying in the pelvic cavity. For instance, we're viewing the pelvic cavity in a cut section like that from the right or left side. So what are you going to see? You're going to see the most anterior structure is going to be the bladder. I really hope you knew that, guys, that the most anterior structure is always going to be the bladder. So you can see over here in the male's anterior bladder. And what is this? This is our uh, infamous organ called the rectum. Rectum is going to be lying most posteriorly. But what about in females? Females, there's going to be, oh my God, what just happened there? Let's just get rid of that. Guys, I'm just going to go down. In the females, what you'll see is anteriorly will be the bladder. In the middle, there'll be an extra organ. No, 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 don't call it extra. It is the golden organ and uh, additional organ known as the uterus. All right, the uterus is going to occupy and then most posteriorly is going to be the rectum. So this is a little perspective of bladder. Now, I just want you to remember that. Look at this. It's very, look at this very carefully. That 
from above we've talked about in the peritoneal tracing of the peritoneum if you haven't watched that yet you need to go and watch in my video do you remember that whenever we talked about the peritoneum and we did a vertical tracing we always saw that there was this peritoneum was always going towards the pelvis and lining the bladder from above right and then when it went behind between individual organs it made a pouch in case of males this was known as a recto vesicle pouch vesicle is anything related to the bladder Whereas in the females, this made two pouches because there are two organs in the uh, three organs in the pelvic cavity, right? So in relation with the bladder, you can see over here the peritoneum maze makes this pouch, utrovesicle pouch, which is more important in bladder. And then another pouch we've already talked about, but that's not going to be mentioned here, so I'm not going to talk about it. So you can see this is the uterus a perspective of the uterus. This is like the uterus part, and then we have the vagina. This is vagina lying posterior to the bladder, whereas superiorly is the uterus and the utrovesicle pouch is lying. I'm just giving you all of this perspective because this is going help you a lot in relation you just need to know basically where the bladder is kept now you're quite smart in that another thing in males guys remember that the prostate lies at the neck of the bladder because males obviously have these extra organs and they have to be lying somewhere so this is where they lie they just like jump over the bladder and they're like bladder we're gonna consume you and we're gonna like invade you and that's exactly what they're doing so prostate is going to invade the neck and the seminal vesicles and the vas deferens you can see is this image over here two seminal vesicles are going to be occupying the base or the posterior surface of the bladder and all the both the ducts ductus deferens are going to be separating the two seminal vesicles from each other and right and left uh, vas deferens going to be lying there so that is like the base i really hope that makes sense to all of you uh so this was a little perspective of the bladder now let's talk about the relations guys this was all uh, you never you don't need to memorize this stuff but what you needed to know for here uh, was just an idea of what's happening so that you understand concept very well from now on is what you're going to memorize is the relations of the bladder we're going to talk about the relations in all of the parts of the bladder that we just talked about we have the apex apex then we have the superior surface infralateral surface base and the neck so we uh, just simply all you have to do is write down all these names apex we were in whatever the parts we studied now let's talk about the relations in males versus females a competition jo hamesha chalta hai and it's gonna keep going is the gender competition which over here again we have to go through it but there's some easy parts all we did for the apex guys i want you to remember is what did I tell you? There was a ligament, median umbilical ligament. It's a remain of the reactus, but that is for embryo, so don't come here for embryo. Talk about it somewhere else. Median umbilical ligament is going to connect it to the umbilicus, so that is apex relation. How easy was that? Easy marks. Then you, what you do is you go ahead for the superior surface. What did I write here? Over here, you can see a very cute mnemonic called peri peri chicken. Yeah, forget the chicken, just peri peri it for now, guys. Peri. I told you all on the superior surface, the peritoneum covers the bladder. So you're going to write peritoneum in males and females, but in females, you're going to add an extra relation. And why is that? Because of that pouch you see over here, utrovesicle pouch, and you'll get the top mark, guys. Next, uh, what do we see? Let's talk about before we go infralateral, let's get the easy things out of the Let's go to the neck. In the neck, in males, it's very easy. Prostate lies in the neck. And in females, there's this extra structure. Guys, I want you to remember that. Uh, let's say the bladder is lying like this. Okay. Most anteriorly is the pubis bone. Uh, the hip bones uh, or the pelvic bones the most anterior part is the pubic bone and then lies the bladder so what happens here the neck of the bladder makes a relation with the pubis bone in case of males it's going to be pubo prostatic because prostate has taken over that part of the bladder whereas in females since prostate doesn't exist it's just going to lie from the neck to the pubis bone so it's going to be pubo vesicle these are ligaments supports of the bladder so that the bladder doesn't like fall down if we, because it, if it falls down it's over for us right therefore these ligaments exist so therefore the base uh, sorry the neck of the bladder is going to be related to the pubo prostatic ligament in uh, males and prostate gland as well in females can be pubo vesicle ligament in the makes sense all right next one i want you to remember is that base we've talked about the relation of the base in males is going to be seminal vesicles with the ducts and in females there's going to be um uterus is lying above so this is the vagina that lies posterior to the base of the bladder all right in case of females and infralateral surface only this is a little diff difficult relation which i won't even call it difficult all you have to remember is guys listen we all know pubis bone is lying here now i want you to remember anterior posterior below anterior posterior below anterior is this yellow thing right over here i'm gonna zoom in anteriorly is this 
uh, retro pubic pad of fat. Why pubic? Because pubis bone is lying here. So anterior, what is going to be? Retro pubic pad of fat. Posterior is going to be, because there's obturator foramen lying on the lateral wall a little posteriorly. Therefore, it's going to be the obturator internus muscle covering the obturator foramen. And inferiorly is this bowl-like muscle, like a pouch or hammock that is going to be uh, separating your pelvic cavity from your perineum. And what was that muscle known as? It's the levator and eye. So what are you going to say for the infralateral surface? On the side, infralateral surface is like this area. Here is the pubic, retro pubic pad of fat. And then posteriorly is the, uh, what we call the obturator internus and inferiorly is the levator and eye. So that, this is all you need to know for the relations of bladder. Let's talk a little about internal structure of the bladder, guys. So the internal structure of the bladder, remember that the bladder is going to be uh, thrown into folds. The folds are over here. You can see that it's going to be thrown into folds. Yeah. Now, these are going to be folds, 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 except for this part lying in the posterior part of the bladder, in the base of the bladder, basically. This triangular area where the folds are not present, the mucous membrane is completely smooth, is known as the trigone of the bladder. The trigone is a triangular shaped uh, mucous membrane present, which is smooth in the base of the bladder, lower part of it. So it has two important things over here, supralateral angles. In the supralateral angle of the trigone is where the ureters enter the bladder, very important. And this this over here between the two ureters is the interureteric ridge. And what is in the inferior angle of this part? It is basically the internal urethral sphincter where the bladder empties itself. So this is an important image. This is the internal uh, structure of the bladder. Another important part of the bladder is posterior to the bladder. What happens is posteriorly the bladder is being disturbed. Like even when you are disturbed and there's friction, you get a little annoyed. Like what? something's there and then like you want to hit the person that's behind you, right? Similarly, the bladder was being disturbed in males obviously in the males, there was a disturbance posteriorly in the bladder, in the neck of the bladder, where the median lobe of the prostate was just like uh, annoying it. So it triggered the bladder to do this. When the bladder did this, it forms this prominence known as the uvula vesicae. There is basically a prominence or an elevation in the posterior part of the neck of the bladder in uh, males, usually because of the median lobe of the prostate. So guys, with that, you know, I don't know what this is. Yeah. With that, we've uh, talked about the relations of the bladder, a little bit of the structure of the bladder. In the next video, I'm going to discuss about the, it's going to be the nerve supply and the blood supply of the bladder. So guys, tune in for the next video.